Although this is a bit of a departure from my usual style of video, it concerns an issue which has been on my mind for a long time. For many years I have been a fan of Cantor's mathematical arguments on cardinality and the size of infinite sets, but I've had some difficulties in accepting them, of course. One of the biggest difficulties I've had is the idea that the intervals 0, 1 and 0, 2 have the same cardinality and are thus the same size. Intuitively, one should be twice as big as the other, and I've never been one to take my intuition lightly. So I set about constructing an argument to further insist that 0, 2 is twice as large as 0, 1. Okay, quick review. For one set to be the same size as another set, there must exist a one-to-one -one ratio between the elements of each set, and there can't be any elements left over in either set. And those who have taken some sort of number analysis class have probably seen how if you let an element in 0, 1 be x, and you multiply x by 2, you get an element in 0, 2. Furthermore, if you take all elements in 0, 1 and multiply them by 2, you get the entire set 0, 2 with no stray elements left over. This works no matter how you choose the endpoints, whether they're both inclusive, both non-inclusive, or a mix. So I do see how 0, 1 can be the same size as 0, 2. But I think that even though 0, 1 is the same size as 0, 2, perhaps 0, 2 is also twice as big as 0, 1. In my limited research on mathematical analysis, I've never seen anybody make such a hypothesis. So I've had to construct a supportive argument of the hypothesis on my own. It is as follows. Take 0, 2 and split it into two sets. The first is 0, 1 and the second is 1, 2. Make sure the endpoint on the right of both sets is inclusive and the endpoint on the left side of both sets is non-inclusive. Now, every element in 0, 1 is obviously in itself with no stray elements and it doesn't take much to show that every element in 0, 1 is also in 1, 2 if you just add 1 to every element in 0, 1. And no elements are left over either. Now, if you combine the set 0, 1 into a union with 1, 2, you get 0, 2 with no overlapping because of the way the endpoints were chosen. 0, 1 forms an exact 1 to 1 ratio with the first half of this set and the second half of this set as well. So the whole 0, 2 set is actually in a 2 to 1 ratio with 0, 1 because every element in 0, 2 is counted exactly once and every element in 0, 1 is counted exactly twice in the matching. So there is a 2 to 1 ratio between 0, 1 and 0, 2 with no elements left over, again because of how the endpoints were chosen. In other words, 0, 2 is twice as big as 0, 1, even though we've already established that it has the same cardinality as 0, 1. To someone that has studied cardinality, this argument may look simple, obvious, and unnecessary. But again, I never have seen it used anywhere before in my limited research, and I genuinely think such an argument adds a lot more clarity to the concept of cardinality. In textbooks and websites, I only see, oh, these sets are the same size, and that's it. End of story. Okay, so maybe they are the same size and maybe the simple finding of a single bijection is enough to establish this fact without further investigation. But to me, the picture remains incomplete until someone tells me the two intervals I've been discussing are the same size 
and one is twice as big as the other. So I've constructed this video as an attempt to beg mathematicians to include my presented argument as an addendum to their textbooks and websites, even if the mathematics behind my argument is totally incorrect. Gosh, I'd like to see somebody pick up where the textbooks seem to leave off. And this example of cardinality appears to be just one interesting property of infinite sets. Not only does my argument show how an interval can be twice as big as itself, it can also be modified to show that pretty much any interval is some whole number of times bigger than any other interval. Like you can make 0, 100 be four times smaller than 0, 1 half if you want. 